All right, in this exercise, we will do the transitional sketch. So we have like a problem that we have a rectangle of five, the, the square of five by five inch, which goes transition to a circle diameter of three inch at 10 inches apart and then back to the square of five by five. So this will be a transition, this will be a loft problem. This problem can only be done by using a new command, which is called loft, new for you today. So we are going to may start by making a centered rectangle on a top plane. And I'm going to dimension this rectangle to be a square, so and to be a five inch size. So and I'm going to make this two line equal in length, but fully constrain my square. Now for a loft, I need a cross sections. So and for a cross sections, I need a new plane. So I'm going to create a new plane, which is going to be offset for a five inches or pardon for the 10 inches of the top plane. So it will be features reference geometry plane. First feature is a top plane, and offset is a 10 inches, and it will create my new plane. Now I'm going to place a sketch at the new plane. And I'm going to make a circle. And that circle is centered at the origin, and the diameter of this circle I'm going to make to be a 3 inches. And I'm going to close this sketch. Now this is what I have. I have this rectangle and I have a circle and I want to create a body which will have a transition from the rectangle to a circle. That body is called loft. So I will go features and I will place the feature which is called lofted boss slash base. And when I click on a lofted boss slash base, it opens profiles and guide curves. In this particular case, we will not have a guide curve since this is the simplest loft that we can do. We are going to choose a profile. Let's choose like, for example, one corner of our sketch one. And then choose somewhere in a similar range, the point at the top sketch. Okay. Now, what you can see, there is a line which is like the shortest distance line connecting the two sketches, and that will be our only really possible guide curve. If we try to modify it, to extend it, it will kind of give us a, a twisted, twisted view, and I don't want that. I will just leave it as is by default. And here is my transition created from the square to the circle. And I click OK to close the loft. Now, this is usually used for reducting, and usually we will expect that this part is hollow. So I will use a shell to open this part, and the thickness of the shell I will put, let's say, like a quarter of the inch. And I'm going to choose in a blue box for the shell parameters or face to remove. I will choose both the circular face and square face, and click OK, and look at this my duct is completed. And now as it specifies that it goes back into another opening, all what I can do is to mirror it, where I will use the mirror face or plane my circular face, and features to mirror are the last one. Let's see what happened here. Memory problem, I'm going to do it again. I will mirror it, and this time I will try it with the bodies to mirror. So bodies to mirror are the only body, and mirror face plane will be my face here. I will click OK, and here is my end. Here is my part being completed. My horn is completed. So demonstrated the basic loft. In the next loft exercise, we are going to do a more complex. We are going to have multiple cross sections, what means that we will need to create a multiple planes. On so each of them, we will need to make a cross sectional sketch and then to loft the object. An object will be like a boat model. Okay, this concludes this demonstration.